Jesus Christ is the beloved Son sent by the Father. And with his life and his words, Jesus makes something crystal clear. He doesn't need to draw others' attention to himself. Jesus doesn't need to attract others' eyes upon himself. Actually, Jesus says, whoever sees me sees him who sent me. Here's what's really important to Jesus, to reveal that other one who is his life, from whom he receives everything and to whom he gives everything back, the Father. It is enough for Jesus to be a reflection of that face before which he lives. The one thing Jesus wants is to be a reflection of the Father, of the Father he loves, for whom he lives. The evangelist John will say in another passage, God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. So, if, on the one hand, Jesus wants nothing more than reveal the Father, on the other hand, the Father, in turn, wants everyone to get to know his Son, Jesus Christ, that through him, through Jesus, all may receive eternal life, all may share in his divine life. Jesus is the gift of the Father. The Father gives himself up to us by giving Jesus to us. He sent his own Son into the world so that we might be drawn back into communion with him. Our Trinitarian God opened up so as to incorporate us in his perfect and everlasting love. This is why Jesus compares himself to the light, which task and end is not to illuminate itself. Light doesn't exist for itself, but to show another, to reveal the other, to enlighten the others. Jesus is the one who reveals the heart of the Father. That's why Jesus isn't a term of judgment or accusation, but he is the word sent by the Father to disclose his loving plan of salvation. Jesus Christ is our salvation, sent by the Father. After all, this is what light really does. It increases the possibilities of movement for all those who are enlightened by it. Light increases the possibilities. It is revelation, security, and through it we can live life in the best possible way. We definitely can't imagine the world, the colors, the life itself without light. In this very essential reality, the light is all about allowing the most important aspects of life to come true. Day by day we've been reading in the Acts of the Apostles, that the Word of God continued to increase and, gain, and to gain followers across several cities and regions. And actually, this is why the Word of God grew you know, so much and so strong after Pentecost. Because the night gave way to the light of day. Because so many men and women discovered the beauty of no longer living for themselves. So many men and women have begun to live in the light. They have begun to live in Christ. They have begun to live in the mystery of Easter, Christ's mystery of cross and resurrection. And this mystery pulled them out from themselves, leading them to that perfect joy of living for others, of living with others, the bright joy of the Holy Trinity, the joy of heaven. St. Francis of Assisi said that all the darkness in the world can't extinguish the light from a single candle. Beautiful, that. But what about us? What about you? Are you able to accept such a humble and beautiful destiny to become light? No matter how small your light may be, it will always be the humble and powerful revelation of beauty. If we are in Christ, we become light. If we become light, our life speaks of the Father, it speaks of heaven. Lord, we want to be light in you, with you. Shine on us and allow us to live inserted 
in the fullness of your light, of your life, of your love. Amen.